morning and welcome to today's at home worship on behalf of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, also known as the Old Town Church in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. As we always say in Old Town, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we're so glad that you've come to join us in worship today. My name is Pastor Kelly and I'll be leading worship from home again today as a reminder that we all need to stay home and stay safe, not only for ourselves, but also for our communities. Friends, one thing that I've come to realize in these uncertain times is that in order to relax and to let go and to release some of the anxiety that we're carrying, it's important to name it. Not complain about it, but to name it, to name the feelings that we're feeling, because by naming them, we release them, even if only for a few moments. So for our centering time today, I'm going to invite everyone to join me in a deep breath. And then I'm going to invite you into a moment of silence, as we all take a moment to lift our worries and anxieties to God, Remembering that God can handle whatever feelings or emotions we might be having right now. And as we begin to fully become present in the spaces that we're in, I invite you to hear our opening song sung by Jim and Megan Fennell. Hi everybody, it's good to worship with you today.
here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together Throughout the season of Lent, we've been trying to rest in the words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. For these are words that Jesus used not only with the disciples thousands of years ago, but he also shares them with us today. Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Friends, it's in times like these that we need to focus on the light. Sure, there's plenty of darkness out in the world right now that brings us fear and worry, but it's our faith that gives us hope. It's our belief in something bigger that assures us of new possibilities. And it's our trust in God that fills our hearts with abundant grace. So let's turn to God together in the spirit of prayer. Oh God, in times of uncertainty and in hours of need, we look to you for strength and for a place where we can truly rest. When we're feeling lost or lonely or afraid, or when it feels as though our load is too heavy to bear, we know that your arms are reaching out to us, offering us the loving grace on which we depend. We pray that you would be with us in our worship today, O oh God, guiding us, teaching us and inspiring us that we might be fed and nourished and made whole. Oh God, hold us in our weariness and give us comfort. Help us to pick up the pieces of our lives and give us strength and courage to follow your call, remembering that we are all in this together. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Friends, sometimes in the midst of chaos and confusion, it's important to go back to the basics. It's important to slow down and to remember things that really matter. We usually find comfort in things that are familiar, things that are close to our hearts, and things that we know. So today's scripture reading is one that I know brings comfort to many. It comes from the Hebrew scriptures, or the Old Testament, and it reminds us that no matter what life brings, whether we're brought to the mountaintops, or to the valleys, or to somewhere in between, that God never leaves us alone. So friends, if you have an Old Town Bible at home, you can follow along on page 617 in the Old Testament, or you can open just about any Bible right to the middle to the book of Psalms and look for Psalm 23. So friends, I invite you to hear these comforting words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, friends, let's take another deep breath. Let's take a moment to center ourselves and to quiet our souls 
as together we listen for the voice of our still speaking God. Gracious and loving God, come to us in this place, in the calming of our minds, in the longing of our hearts, in the stillness of this moment. Speak, O Lord, for your children are listening. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So as we continue on our journey through Lent, I'm very conscious of the question that we've been asking each week, how is your soul? And I've been trying to ask that question as I talk to people on the telephone. Now granted, there's usually a little pause after I ask it because it's a little different than being asked, how are you? to which we usually respond without even knowing, good or okay. But when asked, how is your soul, many people stop and their thoughts go a little bit deeper. Now, two weeks ago, many people answered with the responses, I'm feeling anxious, or I'm feeling frustrated, or I'm feeling nervous. While this week, I heard more responses of overwhelmed or even lost. Overwhelmed by the news, social media, and constant advice as to how we should be doing just about everything. And lost because we're all trying to find a new normal in a not so normal situation. Many of us are struggling to find our way because the road isn't going the way we thought it should. Our regular routines are turned upside down. Everything is different and sometimes it feels as though we're caught in an episode of the twilight zone. Many people are asking, why God? What else can go wrong? What about my plans and my hopes and my dreams? If you really loved me, God, why would you let me feel so lost and frustrated and afraid? And if that's how you're feeling right now, it's okay. You're not alone. Now the tough part is that as human beings, our reaction to situations like this is usually complaining and letting everyone know what we think and how we feel. That's why the news and social media is busy 24 hours a day with updates and opinions and advice of all kinds. Now, of course, you need to stay up to date on what's important, but please, friends, don't let it overwhelm you. Check the news, but then turn off the TV. Set times to check your social media if you need to, but don't let every ding or post pull you in because there's a lot more going on that deserves your attention. Sure, there's lots of struggles right now. There's sickness and fear and anxiety, but you know what? There's also an amazing amount of generosity and kindness and loving your neighbor going on as well. Friends, as many of you know, one of my daily practices is that no matter what situation I find myself in, I try with every ounce of energy that I can muster to look for the good, to find the joy and to recognize the presence of God in the midst of whatever I'm going through. And it's not always easy to do. But one thing that I always find is that the good, the joy, and the presence of God is always tied to something simple, 
something everyday and ordinary, something that's not crying for attention or looking for something in return, but something that's overflowing with unconditional love and grace. In searching for a scripture to share with all of you today, I thought about the classic stories of people and things being lost and then found, like the prodigal son, the lost coin, or the lost sheep, all wonderful stories of redemption and recovery and rescue. But what I struggled with in all of those stories is that the celebration only came when the person or thing was found, or fixed, or saved. The good news came once the story was over. But I want us to search for the gift that we sometimes receive when we're in the midst of being lost. Now that may sound like a strange concept, the gift of being lost. But as the great Henry David Thoreau once said, not until we are lost do we begin to truly understand ourselves. Did you hear that? Not until we are lost do we truly begin to understand ourselves. A few years ago, I read a book titled Blue Highways by William Least Heat Moon. Moon tells the story of the day that he lost his job and his wife in the very same day. And in that moment, he decided that if he couldn't make things go right, then he could at least go. Moon set off in his van and he traveled across the country following only the blue highways or the back roads, allowing the journey to help him to find himself. Every town or city that he went to, he found a diner and he met with the locals, learning more about life and what people thought really mattered. After traveling, I think it was 14,000 miles, a lost, lost and alone, through the kindness of strangers and the stories they shared, Moon finally found himself and realized what life was really all about. In the midst of being lost, he began to remember his roots and his faith, and his heart was opened once again to who and whose he truly was. Friends, Jesus never said the road would be easy. On the contrary, he spoke of all the ways that the world would affect us and the troubles we would face. Jesus knew. He knew that we would all struggle to hold on to him when things got crazy. Because when we face feelings of emptiness, it's usually because our hearts have grown heavy and we've lost sight of the simple gifts that we've been given. And when we feel lost, it's usually because we've allowed that heaviness to hold us back from seeking a connection with God in our lives. For those of you who receive our daily email Lenten devotionals, this week's spiritual practice is the practice of prayer. Each day you'll receive a different practice of prayer that you can use to stay better connected to God. But as with all of our spiritual practices this Lent, please remember that they're not called spiritual perfections because there are no real right or wrong ways to do them. They're simply suggestions to help us on our faith journey. Friends, I've got one more story that I'd like to share with you. And it's about a great teacher who I was blessed to learn from. A wise man who taught me in life and in death to not be afraid, but in every circumstance to always look to God for comfort. 
He spent many years alone after his wife passed away. His body grew old, and it didn't work the way it used to when he was a strong young man. But his mind was sharp, and his heart was full. I visited, I visited him often at the hospital, or at the nursing home, or at his own home, and no matter how frustrated he was with his ailing body, he would always take time to celebrate with me and to thank God for all of the things and people in his life. At the end of each visit, we would always recite the 23rd Psalm together, which he said every night before he went to bed, because he told me that it reminded him of God's constant presence in his life. And it assured him that no matter where life's journey led him, that he was never alone. Together, we would say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On the tough days when he was really struggling, he would also recite the words of Psalm 121, reminding him that even when he felt lost and alone, that God was always there. So when I sensed that he was really frustrated or weary, I would often ask, Conrad, where do you lift your eyes? To which he would respond, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let my foot be moved. He who keeps me will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade at my right hand. The sun shall not strike me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep me from all evil. He will keep my life. The Lord will keep my going out and my coming in from this time on and forevermore. Friends, life is not always easy. We face all kinds of complications and delays and difficulties, and sometimes we feel downright lost. But if we're courageous enough to let go and to lift our eyes to the hills, allowing God to guide us, then we sometimes find ourselves traveling down roads that we never expected to travel. And we see and experience new and amazing things. Things that may not have been a part of our plan, but awesome gifts just the same. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, the next time you are feeling lost, remember that sometimes being lost is a gift. Because it opens our eyes to new paths, and exciting adventures that we never imagined possible. So friends, in the days and weeks ahead, turn your TV off and your social media and spend some time looking for the good, for the joy, and for the presence of God that's all around you. My friends, may it be so. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Friends, let's join together once again in the spirit of prayer. Almighty God, creator of all that is good, we thank you today for all that you've made. We thank you for entrusting us to care for your creation and for one another. Give us strength and wisdom in the week ahead and help us to make good choices, not only for ourselves, but also for the good of our entire community. Oh God, we ask your blessing on those who are in special need today, those fighting illness and pain, those who have lost hope and live in fear, those who have experienced loss and are grieving, and those who feel all alone in this world. Bless the helpers who are out risking their own health for the health of others. And for the teacher that's in each and every one of us, that teaches those around us by the examples that we set in our everyday lives. Oh God, listen now as your children lift both silently and aloud the names of those on our prayer list, and the names of those in need of your gentle touch today. O oh Lord, we pray that you might hold us safely in your arms. Open our eyes to see the blessings all around us and in us. And help us to open the eyes of our hearts that we might experience you in unexpected ways this week. We pray all this in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is a time in our service when we usually have our offering. And the good news is that we do have an offering today, as Kevin Graves will be offering a gift of song. As you listen, I would ask that you think about the gifts of grace that you've received in your life and how you might be generous with them. Whether you normally worship with us or you worship somewhere else, please remember to support your local church. If you'd like to make an online donation to the First Congregational Church in North Attleboro, you can go to our website below or our address will be in the YouTube description if you'd like to mail in a donation. And we thank you in advance for your generosity. And now, on to our gift of song.
to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. Friends, as today's at home worship comes to an end, remember to take care of yourself. Stop and take a deep breath every once in a while and take time to rest. Of course, wash your hands, be generous with those in need. Stay honest and humble and keep your eyes on Jesus. And if you have a day when you're feeling particularly lost and alone, look for the amazing gifts of grace that are all around you, knowing that God loves you just the way you are, and so do I. Friends, as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Rest and remain with each and every one of you, now and forevermore. Amen.